With the current electric bike market being saturated with various brands joining the flood every month, it can be a daunting process to choose the right bike for you. Understandably, this can make buyers opt for known brands which have proven themselves over the years. This simple fact means new brands will have to do everything right to get a foothold and compete in the current market. Today I'm going to be showcasing the Nomad 1 from Velotrek, a well thought out bike that's going to put a lot of pressure on competing brands. The Nomad 1 is available in a step-through design, which is what you see here, and a traditional high-step design. Both models come in at $1,500 at the time of recording. I opted for the convenience of the step-through model because both designs look very sturdy. It also has a generous height recommendation for both short and tall riders. Because price and features of both models are identical, this is mostly going to come down to personal preference. If I planned on using this bike for heavy off-roading or hard trail riding, I would have opted for the traditional high-step design. But for my style of riding, the step through has not let me down. To ensure my reviews hold credibility and value, I don't pull any punches when it comes to reviewing these bikes. Although Velatrick did send me their Nomad 1 to review, it's not going to affect my opinions of the bike. That being said, Velotrek has done so much right in this price bracket on the Nomad 1 that I'm just going to go ahead and get my few negatives out of the way first. We're going to go in order from least annoying to most. The current model is not supplied with an integrated tail light. This is not a big deal as I always use redundant tail lights when I'm riding anyways and most of the ones that come on e-bikes are nothing to write home about. They do give you a simple button cell tail light to attach to the bike and it works okay. The good news is Velotrick has assured us that they're going to integrate a tail light into newer models. My last two complaints, and trust me, I was looking for more, but this is all I got. These are quality of life features that I complain about on any electric bike that doesn't have them, mainly because I can't see these costing the company any money as their simple factory settings. And given the fact that they claim to use their own in-house design power system, I don't know why they didn't add these. The Nomad 1 does not allow you to customize your pedal assist levels, which is a little bit of an annoyance because it means some of the gears on the cassette are wasted. Most people won't care about this and they've done a pretty good job with the available 5 speeds, but I love to set custom pedal assist levels for each gear on the cassette so nothing's wasted. And lastly, the bike has no cruise control and this was a real letdown. For long stretches of flat road, cruise control is so convenient that I don't understand why they didn't give us this feature. Now on to what makes Velotrek a company you would definitely want to consider when weighing your options in the electric bike market. 
With the hardware co-founder of Lime, Adam Zhang, at the head of their team comprised of other mines from Specialized, Giant, and Declan, they are quite familiar with the hardships that these bikes need to stand up against, and it definitely shows in the design of the Nomad 1. The official UL certification on their charger, bike, and battery gives you a peace of mind that's unheard of in this price bracket. The Nomad's IPX6 waterproof rating means that it's not only suitable to ride in the rain, it's resistant to high pressure spray from any angle. This is one of the best water resistance ratings you can have on an electric bike and will stand up to pretty much anything other than straight up dunking the bike in a swimming pool. Now I can't speak for everyone, but as a tall rider the geometry of this bike feels on point. It is one of, if not the most comfortable bikes I have ever ridden. The medium height swept back handlebars give a relaxed riding position without sacrificing stability or impeding on your ability to apply pedal assistance. At no point during my testing on various riding conditions did this bike feel out of place whether it was a long stretch of road or light trail use. A true all-terrain bike in every sense of the word that the casual rider can ride however they like. The dynamic power delivery of their speed controller is very well tuned. The controller is more aggressive when applying power on uphill grades. It can seem to sense the moment your elevation begins to increase, while still maintaining a smooth and subtle decrease in power once you crest a hill or begin to descend. In short, it's smooth enough that you don't notice any pulsing sensations when you're at cruising speeds, but aggressive enough so you don't have to shift through a bunch of gears every time you reach a slight incline. To comply with electric bike regulations in most states, out of the box it's limited to a top speed of 20 miles an hour. You can unlock the bike to go faster, but you'll have to email Velotrick to get the code. This is simply done for legal reasons, not by choice. They don't want to get in hot water, and they want to make sure that the user understands the laws in their state. However, that doesn't limit this bike's power. Their 750 watt motor is custom tuned in-house to peak at 1200 during acceleration and uphill climbs. For advanced riders and long range enthusiasts, you get both a wattage output on the display and a voltage readout. I won't know for sure how accurate the battery bar indicator is until I take this on a long range ride, but from what I can tell so far is it appears to be accurate. Their 48 volt battery comes in at 14.4 amp hours, just a hair under the 15 amp hour sweet spot. And you get the peace of mind knowing this is a Tesla grade battery with LG or Samsung cells. Until I do a range test, I can't tell for sure, but they claim that their custom tune gives this more efficiency than other bikes in its price bracket which is not an easy thing to do on a fat tire bike because of the added drag. Their claims are up to 55 miles. I suspect I'll get around 45 with my style of riding, but that's yet to be seen. They've included a 3 amp charger, which is 50% faster than most bricks you get on bikes in this price bracket. This will give you a charge time of 6 hours on a completely flat battery, but since most riders never drain their battery to zero, you can expect 4 to 5 hours. The LED indicator on the battery has some conveniences for knowing when it's charged and discharged, but I really like that it lights up green to let you know when it's between 50 and 80%. This time of year especially, people won't be riding their bikes as much, and storage charge on batteries are important, so a quick glance to know exactly where you're at is just one of those small tweaks to let you know they're thinking about everything. Another subtle detail about this bike, which is the best I've seen so far, but something I admittedly hardly ever use, is their walk mode. Most electric bikes have this. You hold down on the negative button and it'll enter walk mode. When a lot of bikes go way too fast and they force you to power walk, this one has a nice two and a half mile an hour speed. So when you're going up steep inclines, the bike's not trying to pull away from you or be too heavy to push. Their step-through model has four color options and their high step has three. I really like the color palette they've gone with on this bike. I know looks are subjective, but this mango, or what everyone's just going to call yellow, really helps this bike stand out when you're riding around traffic without being so flashy that it says, look at me. It's just really nice to have this added safety feature that makes the bike look even better. For the headlight, you get one that's about above average for most e-bikes, especially in this price range. It's nothing fantastic, but it's good enough for top speed on this bike in pitch black situations. Thankfully, they've included a USB charging port on the display itself, so if you want to add an extra headlight, charge video cameras, or your phone, you'll be good to go. They've gone with a Shimano push-pull trigger shifter, meaning that you don't have to change your grip to shift gears. Adding to this convenience are two full-size lock-on grips which will not rotate under riding conditions but are easy to take off and adjust. Fat tire bikes in general are not usually fun to pedal, especially without power. The gear ratio on this bike doesn't complement low speed operations very well, but it does match up to its top speed. At 20 miles an hour, the cadence is just right and your legs won't run away. 
However, the trade-off with these fat tires is a very cushy ride that's comfortable in a variety of different situations. The PSI rating from 5 to 30 means that you're suited for pretty much any environment. They recommend staying off ice, but snow, sand, dirt, gravel, you're good to go. The high water resistant rating combined with the anti-corrosion chain make this one of the few fat tire bikes that you could justify riding on the beach without cringing over the salt water. To help stop these big freaking tires is a full hydraulic brake setup, which is really well tuned out of the box. I didn't have to make any adjustments, neither to the brakes or the derailleur. And as many of you know, hydraulic brakes come with more benefits than just better stopping power. If you use it as a daily rider, you won't be stuck readjusting your brake pads every week. The front suspension is pretty decent as well. It's nothing to write home about, but it does a good job at soaking up the large bumps while leaving the smaller bits of road debris to be soaked up by the tires. To help keep the price down in this bracket, they've opted to just focus on the critical components of the bike and make sure that the base platform is ideal for pretty much anyone. Because of this, they offer the front and rear rack separately, as they know not everyone's going to need them, so they might as well keep the cost down somewhere. But you still get the massive full-size front and rear fenders, which do a really good job at keeping you clean under dirty riding conditions. And I know this comes down to personal preference for some, but these are plastic and they're what I prefer. They're a lot less noisy and, in my opinion, a bit safer. Shipping full-size fat tire bikes like this is not cheap, but they still give you free shipping to all the lower 48 states. And for packaging, this was about one of the best protected bikes I've seen out of the box. The outer box showed some significant signs of shipping damage, but absolutely nothing inside the box was damaged. There wasn't even a scratch on this thing. Most e-bikes will give you a simple toolkit to assemble the bike, but they've gone out of their way to include some decent quality when it comes to the tools, even ball-end Allen wrenches. For individuals who are new to bikes, it can be kind of daunting putting an electric together for your first time, but they do offer a service for a reasonable price which will come to your home and professionally assemble the bike for you. Another subtle but appreciated tweak is that the throttle takes priority over pedal assist. And although it doesn't make up for the lack of pedal assist options, it does make it a bit easier whenever you suddenly encounter some sketchy terrain where you need to both go slow and still pedal. You don't have to play around with the pedal assist levels. Once you activate the throttle, it instantly takes the speed from the throttle instead of pedal assist. I'd also like to point out that the throttle is very crisp without being touchy. When you activate it or make adjustments in your speed, you notice it immediately, but it ignores tiny little trimmers when you're riding over bumpy terrain. To sum up my first impressions about the Nomad 1 from Velotrick is where there are simply too many bikes out there for me to test them all and tell you for sure, this has certainly got to be in the top list. For its price of $1,500 compared to other bikes, I couldn't imagine anyone would purchase this one and regret it because they didn't know if there was a better option. And whereas I'm pretty disappointed to see they didn't supply cruise control, the list of positives about this bike far outweigh anything negative that I could find. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe. So, my first kind of significant find. I found my first wheat penny. It's a 1944. Not super old, but still pretty dang old. Now this little guy was tricky too. <laughs> he made me work for it. There's a big old root right here, and he was smack dab in the middle underneath it, about, say, seven inches down.